Welcome back. This section is going to be about social media, how to grow and engage with your audience. We're going to go over some awesome hacks on how to grow your audience. Uh, mostly I'm going to look at Twitter, but you can use some of these examples uh, to create your own hacks for um, for Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn or whatever you need to do. Use these ideas as inspirations uh, for how you can create great stuff for your company and grow uh, your social media presence. So the four social media hacks we're going to go through here today are following back new followers. So basically when someone follows you, you follow them back. Um, this is a great way to engage with your audience and to uh, attract and gain new followers. A lot of people will follow you with a bot and then if you don't follow them back within about a day, it will unfollow you automatically. So um, if you want to, if you're looking to just gain followers kind of a little bit just for the sake of increasing the number, which isn't always a bad thing, um, I wouldn't suggest it all the time, but this can be a great way to keep some of those people who are automatically um, following you. And if you're not trying to do that, it's just a really good way to, uh, you know, increase your followers and, you know, interact with them. The next one's going to be sending new followers a thank you tweet. This is a little bit better. It's just a little bit more interactive. You can uh, send people a thank you message along with something valuable. For example, um, you can send them a blog post they might be interested in, a video, an ebook you have, anything like that. It doesn't have to be from you. I would, um, uh, it doesn't have to be something that you created. It can be something that they will find valuable. If you're creating value for your followers uh, on social media, more people will come. They're gonna they're gonna forward it along to their friends, and that's how you grow. You will not gain a ton of followers by simply um, by simply promoting yourself. You have to provide value to your followers, uh, to your fans, whatever it is. Uh, ne the next one, Instagram photos to Twitter photo tweets. This is a really good one for anybody who's got a business that is very photogenic. So anything where you have, um, where you've got, you know, nice pictures that are going to help, uh, your followers see your tweets. Photo tweets are great for, um, you know, in the, in the Twitter feed, they stand out a lot better. You can also send those sort of things to Google plus and Facebook. And then finally, we're going to show you how to find five, prospects with Cicado. Um, that's going to get into a little bit of the next section too of finding customers. So this is going to go fast. Think of this as using inspiration rather than as a tutorial on how to do every individual thing. So let's get it going. So the first one uh, is is going to be using a tool called Zapier. Um, we're going to cover Zapier a lot in this course. So I suggest that you go play around with it. It's free to sign up and essentially it lets you connect, like it says, other apps uh, connect apps you use to automate workflows. So you can connect one app to another to make things happen automatically. Um, again, it's free to sign up for their free tier. So this first one we're going to do here in Zapier is basically how it works is I am going to select a trigger. So the trigger is that someone follows me. And this trigger, when someone follows me on Twitter, is going to uh, trigger these next actions to happen. So all the way down until following the user again. So it's it's basically when an action happens, I want to do a few other actions based on the first one. So that is that's basically how Zapier works. So let's go through this one a little bit. So first, I'm selecting that I want to trigger based on new followers. You have a lot of other options, but I'm going to base based on new followers. And I want to do that when I get a new Twitter follower on one of my Twitter accounts. So when I do that, the next step I'm going to go through is a filter. This is if you want to not necessarily show or re, uh, follow every single person who follows you. If you want to actually follow only certain people, for example, I am only going to follow people whose Twitter profile description contains the term small business. So if you click on this, this is sort of the variables you have from, uh, from the original Twitter follower. Um, these are just examples with this one Twitter follower, but it'll use the Twitter follower that follows you each time. So you have lots of information. You have their description, how many followers they have, their location, all, all sorts of things that you can use. So if you want to only follow people back who have more than 5,000 followers, you can set that up. And obviously you can set up multiple uh, filters with the and and or option. So I suggest you play around with that a little bit. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a delay. I'm setting a 19 minute delay so that it doesn't look automated. If you follow someone back who follows you almost immediately, it's going to look automated. It's not as good. So I try to avoid, even though it is automated, I try to avoid making it look automated with these delays. These, these can be pretty useful. Um, the 19 minutes is fairly arbitrary, but so just set it up so that you um, can do something like this. You can maybe decide what you want to do. And obviously, the last step in this is to follow the person back. All Zapier needs is their screen name, which you can get from uh, step one, which triggered the event, um, triggered this whole step, this whole process. Uh, and that's all there is to it. Now, every time when I, when I set this zap to be on, every time someone follows me, it's going to go through all these steps. It's going to stop them if they don't have small business in their description. So you can set up a few of these to make sure you're following and uh, you know you're following back the right people. The next one we're going to cover is send new followers a thank you tweet. Uh, again, I'm using the new follower Twitter as a, on Twitter as a trigger. So when someone follows me on Twitter, it's going to trigger the next three actions. The first action is to create a spreadsheet row. So for this one, I'm just logging all of my new followers in a spreadsheet row. You don't have to do this, um, but it's just for something else that I'm doing. I'm, I'm uh, peeling back the curtain on this one. I'm showing you exactly what I'm doing. Um, these are not just examples that I've set up. These are, these are ones that I actually use. Then I've got a delay here for 20 hours. So basically the next day, I'm going to send them a tweet. And the, how I'm going to actually send them a tweet is using a tool called Buffer. I would absolutely suggest you check out a tool, this tool called Buffer. It is free to use, and essentially the way it works is you create a queue, a, li a waiting list of tweets or posts that you want to send out to your social media profiles, and at a set schedule, Buffer will automatically post them. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a tweet to my Buffer. So it's not going to post it immediately. It's going to wait until the next scheduled time, or it's going to add it to the bottom of my list. So it's going to wait till it's you know this one comes up. But this is another good way to avoid it looking like automation because you're not going to be sending out um, you know three seconds after the person follows you. You're not follow You're not sending them an immediate. Um, message that says thanks for the follow. What's actually happening, it's going to wait almost a day and then it's going to go into my buffer queue at which it could wait three days, it could wait a week, it could wait one day. Um, you can. This is just how I've set it up, you can do it however you want. So what I've done here is I've selected what I want the tweet to be. Um, I've, I'm saying I want this to be at the follower screen name. The follower screen name is the screen name of the person who followed me originally and then I've typed out a tweet. You can type out a lot of different, you can type out whatever you want, plus you can use all the data from your the, the follower. So if you want to include something about their image or anything there, like that, you can improve, include that dynamically as well for each new follower. You can also, this is a great spot to offer people a link to something that they might find useful. For example, if you think it would be useful for them to see a um, a blog post or a video or an ebook that you have. This is a great place to provide a link. Thanks for following me. I thought you might be interested in this. Um, to do that, I would definitely suggest setting up a filter. I don't have a filter in this one, but I would definitely suggest setting up a filter so that um, you can make sure you're sending that piece of information to the correct type of people. The third one we've got, again, this is Instagram to Twitter photo tweets. So for this one, I've selected the trigger to be Instagram new liked media. So basically what happens is when I'm on my phone, on my Instagram Instagram app, and I like a tweet, it's going to trigger this set of steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, truncate, which basically means I'm going to chop off um, the text to a specific character length. So, you know, on, on Instagram, there's no character limit or at least there's a really long character limit, longer than Twitter, for uh, what you can say is the description of your tw of your Instagram post. So I'm going to cut this to be 95 characters. That way uh, I can include that in my tweet without getting any errors from Twitter that say, you know, hey, your tweet was too long, we couldn't post it. So this is just a shortcut. I find 95 is a good, uh, good length, especially if you're going to be posting images. That reduces your... Um, that reduces the length of the tweet you can provide, but you can play with that obviously and uh, customize it yourself. So again, I'm adding this to buffer. 
I'm creating a tweet that says from at the Instagram Instagram username. So it's basically saying at the person who tweeted. So I am giving them credit for it. Um, and then I've got the caption text, which is the shortened text that the person actually included in their post. So um, you can see if I open this up, I can go to the uh, caption text and it and I can select that or I can just select data from the original post so the days are finally getting long enough for after work sessions whatever that is um, it's automatically gonna post and then as the photo URL I'm just selecting the Instagram standard resolution URL that way buffer is going to post a photo tweet that says this and it's going to include the URL. You may also want to include some hashtags, things like that. You can do that for all anything on Twitter. This is just, you know, this is a kind of what I have set up right now, but you can customize this as much as you want. Finally, the last thing, finding prospects with Cicado. So Cicado is a tool that is not free. Uh, most of the tools that I'm suggesting are free. This one does have a 14 day free trial, which I just signed up for here on a test account. Basically what this does is it lets you search Twitter for people who fit a certain profile. So let's say, for example, that I am trying to target software engineers. They have a template for that. You can also create your own template, but I'm gonna do the software engineers template and then hit next. Well, Cicado is, seems to be not working super well here. There we go. I'm trying to start conversations. So I'm software engineers, start conversations with prospects. Then what you can do is when I approve a prospect, so you can see it's got prospects up in here where I can approve, decline, or have them come up later. Um, when I approve a prospect, it will do a few things. You can have it automatically follow them on Twitter within an hour. You can turn that off or on. And then you can have... Cicado like a tweet of theirs 24 hours later, which means that you're going to follow them and then you're going to like a tweet of theirs. That's a really good way to get on their radar. So when a prospect follows you back, so assuming that they follow back, you want to automatically send them a direct message and you can type out what you want this exact thing to say. So, you know, hi, my name's Jack. I've enjoyed some of your tweets on uh, software. Uh, do you, do you uh, have any interest in viewing a webinar about software development with a link to the software development? And you can preview that, uh, obviously. So I'm going to finish setup. Oh, okay, it's going to want me to uh, type this out. Let me just fill this in really quick. Okay, there we go. So that's the whole setup. I literally just signed up for a free trial just before filming this. So this is as long as it takes to set up. And then what we've got is prospects that Cicado thinks that are, are relevant to um, software engineers. They think these guys are software engineers. So what I can go, to, what I can do, and they're trying to help out, what I can do is approve any one of these and it's gonna go through those steps that I set up before. So you can edit the criteria. So these, this is the template that it had. It, it uses these sorts of things to find um, the people. So it's using that their uh, Twitter must mention game dev, dev life, API, machine learning, any, any of those things. Their profile needs to include architect, programmer, chief, you know, all this stuff so that that's how it finds them. So you can edit those templates as well. And then you can edit the automation. So again, when I um, when I approve someone here, if I ap approve Jan here, it's going to follow them on Twitter within an hour and then like one of their tweets 24 hours later. Then if he follows me back, it's going to send them a direct message with this. So you can add a couple of templates. You can do A-B testing on multiple templates of direct messages. So this is just another good way to try to find specific prospects prospects that meet your needs. Um, so that is a great way to grow your Twitter following for potential customers, which will bring us into our next section, um, which will be all about 
how to find your customers with a few hacks that are great in there. Again, just like I mentioned at the top of the course, if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at JackP underscore Dean. If you do have questions, email me, hello at jackpdean.com. I will actually respond and help you get some of these things set up. I'll answer some of your questions and uh, try to get uh, some of these automations going for you. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.